Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. We are talking about induction. Last time we talked about an application yeah, uh, of induction and today we want to see what self-induction is. Right? So we have a coil. Okay? Drawn this again, a coil and, and windings. It has a certain length L, it has a certain area A and we are now connecting this coil to a voltage. Yeah, to a voltage, so a current is, is passing through and we want to see how the, all those things uh, turn out. When we, because actually when we put on a voltage there, yeah, there is a changing magnetic field inside. Yeah? And this would have influence because we said the changing magnetic field can come from somewhere and also from the current running through our coal itself. Coil, <laughs> not coal, <laughs> hopefully not too much current because then it's a coal. Yeah? Right now it's still a coil. <laughs> so a coil. Yeah? Let's see what the magnetomotive force. So let's draw the Durchflutung. Yeah? So we have n windings multiplied by our current I. Yeah? And this actually equals, and we had this, our magnetic field strength multiplied by L. Yeah? Because this is magnetomotive force and this is divided to L. There is a video where I explain why it's just L and not also the outside. Yeah? So our H here equals N times I divided by L. Just get the L to the other side. And we know our, our magnetic flux density B equals mu multiplied by H. We also covered this. So our magnetic flux density B equals mu multiplied by n, multiplied by i, divided by L. And our magnetic flux, phi, which is going here through, yeah, equals flux density multiplied by A, the area. <laughs> so our magnetic flux phi equals mu multiplied by n multiplied by i divided by l multiplied by a. This is our magnetic flux field. Good. So far, so good. Yeah? And then let's have a look at the law of induction. Yeah? Induction. So actually we had minus u plus i times times r equals minus flux change linked flux dt, which was minus n times d phi to d t. Okay. This was this was actually what was the law of induction. And now we set this in. Huh? So now we say this is minus n multiplied by the change rate of this. Because this is phi. And of course, if some things, what is changing in here? Let's see. Mu, I have a thing so that a constant is changing, right? N, no, still the same coil. L, no, it's still the same coil. A, no, it's still the same coil. I, yes, I may change. So, 
I can write it like that. That we say minus u plus r times i, uh, simply change this, uh, is minus n multiplied. And now everything, let's everything get to the, before the change rate. So it's mu, it's n, it's a, it's l, i is still inside, di, dt. Hmm? Uh, so we have here minus n squared multiplied by mu a l di dt. Good. And now let's write it down that we only have the, the voltage. Huh? Okay, so the voltage U equals, bring this to this side, bring this to this side, the resistance R multiplied by the current I plus N squared multiplied by mu multiplied by A divided by L and then we had di to dt. And this stuff here, we had a name for this, it was the inductance, it was the inductance L. Yeah? So actually what we are seeing here is u equals r times i plus L times and the change rate of I. That's it, All right? That's our finding. Let's analyze this for a moment. Do you know this? U times R R times A, Ohm's law. I told you it's important. Yeah? So this is the, the Ohm part of this. It's the current passing through a resistor, and so we need a certain voltage. And then there's another thing. Yeah? There's the inductance multiplied by the change rate of the current. Okay? This is the magnetic part. This is the Ohm part. This is the magnetic part. Yeah? So the magnetic part will also add something to, to the, to the uh, voltage at the coil. And this might be significant, yeah? because uh, thinking about turning off a coil, huh? then this di to the d, if you just cut off, cut open a wire, open, open a switch, yeah? then this is very high. So we have very high voltages. It's not that easy to turn off coils. Yeah, if there is already current passing through, the coils, this will not, this, 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 there will be high peaks of, 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 of voltage in there. Yeah? So that's it. We have Ohm's part, we have a magnetic part. Self-induction, this is called. Yeah? This is called self-induction. And, well, that's, see, it's just straightforward. Just writing it down, setting into the law of induction, and then we get this. Yeah? And there is, a, remember, yeah, what was, what was the uh, current yeah? equaled uh, <laughs> the capacity times the the change rate of the voltage. Yeah? The change rate of the it, it's the same form like for a capacitor, but it, this voltage and current switch places and there's an inductance and not the capacity. All right. So we will notice this more often in future that these coils and, and uh, uh, capacitors do behave similar, but exactly the other way around. Yeah? 
it's not yin and yang, it's, it's coil and capacitor in our case here. Huh? Self-induction, yeah, that's an effect. It's also the reason why a current change in a, in a coil is not that easy. Yeah? You need to drive it. All right. Next time, we come to a very important part of electricity. We come to the part where we do induction because of movement. Okay? Movement induction. Yeah. Move induction. This is then in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.